folks. Um, so, you know, I thought I had my garage set up the way I wanted it, but no, that's not really the case. Um, what is the case is I need to rearrange the garage again. Yeah, I know. So, um, I got a clear path to get the Jeep in here because I need to pull the engine and I'd rather do it where I have air conditioning. That's what that thing over there is. And, um, problem is I've got a printing press that's for sale underneath here and the Jeep isn't going to move through that. Everything else on wheels I can kind of move around it. So what I'm going to do is uh, move the printing press to the back wall and I think I can get some more stuff in over there. I think I think there's a little space over there. So anyway that's today's project. So we're going to go into time lapse mode and you guys can watch.
well I huffed and I puffed and I shoved the Jeep in and you guys got to watch. I can't believe I got this done this afternoon. It's amazing what a little motivation will do. So yeah, the ever moving garage workshop doing what it's supposed to do being a place that I can work on stuff in air conditioning. I still can't believe I got this fucking thing in here by myself. And uh, I guess I could have gone a little closer in, but basically I disconnected the steering linkage from the pitman arm because the steering uh, jack shaft is jacked the F up. And um, there was no way I was gonna get it in here without being able to turn the wheels. So this gives me a little bit more maneuverability on Yeep. And not today, Satan, not today. I'm not gonna empty every pocket today. Maybe next week. Um, I found a body shop in the area about two miles away that's gonna straighten the frame for me. I checked out a couple of unk yards, as my uh, Mexican friends would say. The unk yards were junky. Um, one crushed the Jeep that had a donor frame uh, about three days before I got there. Mm. If that's not a hint from above, I don't know what is. And then the other potential donor frame, about all it was going to donate was rust. And that's just not something we're interested in with the Jeep. So um, the, one of the things this thing has got going for it is it is a rust-free frame. Yeah, there's a little surface rust. You know, get over it. Um, the rest of the frame is solid, and that's that's honestly what matters. Uh, I did just talk to Rough Country. Awesome technical support. Uh, they helped me figure out I've got a two and a half inch lift kit in place with the premium shocks. Uh, I don't know whose headlights these are. I'll figure that out another day. Um, they look like they might be the brand that I actually like. I think they are. If not, they'll go away. But the next project. Um, the, uh, you know, Chris and his dad who owned the body shop uh, were super awesome. They came over and actually looked at my Jeep. They dropped what they were doing and came over right after lunch and, and looked at my Jeep and crawled under it and said, yeah, we can fix this and we're in charge of 600 bucks. And I thought, that's freaking amazing. Um, that's what I call service. Some of the body shops didn't even, they're like, ah, yeah, we don't work on those. Now you can't do that. You gotta buy a whole new truck. Yeah, fuck y'all. So, um, and, and I get it, um, FCA uh, thinks that you can't use heat on the frame and you shouldn't section it. I don't know what the hell they think anybody's doing about rust on their frames. Hmm, yeah, drain hole, what's that? Something fucking engineers have never heard of. Anyway, so I, I really don't think it's gonna be a big deal. If I have to reinforce the frame, I will. But one of the things we talked about is that it will be a lot easier for them to do their magic if the engine is out. And that will give me a chance to break the Jeep of its bad habit of marking its territory with oil. Um, so I'm gonna, I, the radiator's gotta come out anyway. At that point, I'm gonna pop this loose. Uh, I hope that's not a mistake because it really should be in there for them to pull on but it will be a hell of a lot easier to bring the engine out if it just comes straight out. And, um, hello kitty. Uh, so I don't know what we're gonna do with the transmission after that, but I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. But my next project over the next few days is going to be to pull the engine out and discover how many other parts I'm gonna buy. I already know that I'm gonna buy a coil assembly because that one's cracked back there and um, engine still doesn't run. I think the problem is back here in the wiring. Uh, I might spend the morning looking at that tomorrow or the afternoon, well, I don't know, when I get to it. But, but at any rate, the next step in the project is to get the engine out. Now that I've got the engine where I can work on it comfortably, day or night, rain or shine, Texas hot ass weather, or some of that escaped New York weather that comes down here and does bad things like snow on us. Yeah, y'all New Yorkers need to keep your weather at home because we're sick of it. We'll keep our hurricanes, you keep your snowstorms. Deal? Anyway, thanks for watching my video. Please remember to subscribe and like. 
my videos. And uh, if you watch my playlists, look at my playlists on my videos, that's how I organize the different crazy things that I'm engaged in. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. <laughs>